uh, let me talk today about projections. So the first topic for today is projections. And the first uh, appearance of projections uh, is naturally in physics. When you look at, well, when you try to solve a problem of, for example, pushing an object. So if you want to push an object, then you apply force. And we know force is a vector. And I'm applying that force. And if I apply that force in one direction, I fail to push the object. If I apply the force in another direction, the object moves. And that's what I want. So the result depends on the direction of my vector of force. And from practice, we know that the more my force is along the direction, the better the effect is. And if it is perpendicular, it's just a waste of my energy, a waste of my effort. So, uh, there are two things here to consider. One is a vector of the possible motion of the object. And sometimes this vector is uh, describing the only direction possible for the object to move. Like in the case of uh, pushing a train, it is limited to the train tracks and never goes left or right. Uh, in case of pushing this eraser, it will only go horizontally, otherwise it, it will fall. So, one vector describes the possible direction, and the other vector call it U, can be thought of as a force applied to the object. And then that force results in motion. And what we want to measure is a part of the force that acts on the object, moving it in the direction we want. So this is the part of the force that actually pushes the object as we want. And the rest of the force, well, let me make it blue, uh, is a waste of our effort. So our force is decomposed into the sum of two vectors. One is highly useful for the purpose, the other one is total waste. And what we want is to maximize the useful one, minimize the waste. Uh, sometimes we cannot make the waste zero, uh, but that's a question of technical limitations. So our uh, purpose now is to compute both things. And first of all, we will compute the useful part. So to compute that, we will need, of course, that angle. Let's call it alpha. And then the magnitude of this useful part of the force is going to be called the component. This is the notation that we will go into, that we will use for the whole semester. Component of the vector u in the direction of the vector v. So that is going to be a number, and the value of that number is going to be from this triangle the magnitude of u times cosine of alpha. Now, from computational point of view, that formula is not highly useful, because given two vectors, u and v, it is not easy to find the cosine unless you use the dot product and the formula we discussed last time. So the idea is to 
use well to compute that quantity using the dot product of u and v and to do that I would multiply and divide that quantity by the magnitude of v which doesn't change the quantity itself but the numerator now looks like the dot product and actually it is the dot product so it is dot product of u and v divided by magnitude of v and that's the simplest formula for computing the component of the force vector onto the given direction. Couldn't you also use the log cosines to get the dot product over the magnitude and then just cancel out the extra yes. term? Yes, yeah. you, you can do that. So if you just uh, start with that formula u times cosine alpha and replace cosine with uh, u dot v divided by magnitude u times magnitude v then u cancels and you arrive at the same formula oh, so basically this is the formula that I suggest you memorize and you will use it a lot this semester now let's talk a little about uh, that formula first of all that's a number although the whole thing contains a lot of vectors the numerator is a dot product of two vectors resulting in a number the denominator is the magnitude which is a number again 